Hey there, my name is Adam Keller, and I'm the host of CDK Live. In this episode, we're going to explain what CDK constructs are and show a live demonstration to help illustrate how users can interact with them. But before we dive in, let's talk a little bit about constructs. At the heart of the CDK is where you'll discover what I like to call its true superpower, the abstractions, which are referred to as constructs. Traditionally, when building cloud resources, um, you have to think about defining the lower level or you know boilerplate resources and stitch everything together on your own, such as identity and access management, networking, and so on. Regardless of the skill level, this process is not just tedious, but it can be error prone. Here's where CDK constructs come in. They can help reduce the complexity and intricate glue logic required when integrating AWS services with one another. Constructs come in three flavors, each offering a distinct level of abstraction. So we start with our level one or L1 constructs. These map directly to cloud formation resources. Using these constructs require a deeper knowledge and understanding of the resources and how to connect dependencies. Developers will often use L1 constructs when there's a lack of a higher level construct available or lack of support for a particular feature within that resource. I would also add that if it's not for those reasons, oftentimes developers will use L1 constructs when they want to actually define everything at that lower level. The next is the level two or the L2 constructs. This is a step up from level one as these constructs uh, these constructs offer abstractions through a higher level intent-based API. They come with good practices and same defaults built in, along with helper methods to simplify working with dependencies across resource types. And last, lastly, we have the level three or L3 constructs. These are the highest level of, of abstraction and actually offer the most opinion as they encapsulate patterns by combining multiple resources for specific use cases and scenarios, such as a load balance Fargate web service, for example. Other examples of where you see users using L3 constructs is when they build them uh, on their own. So, you know, if a central platform team is building out reusable constructs across the organization and they want their developers to use these constructs because they bake in good practices and they bake in the patterns that they've approved, um, you'll see oftentimes that this is where L3 constructs are leveraged because you know, they may consist of you know, a, an application load balance uh, you know, Fargate service pattern, for example, or a Lambda um, behind a, a REST API or an HTTP API, uh, an API gateway, but they have the company standards baked into those constructs. So, those are the three flavors of constructs. Now, what I'd like to do is actually show what that looks like when we're actually working with our CDK code. So I have a CDK um, app here. And what I'm doing is I'm defining my stack and I'm gonna start by defining L1 resources. So for my first example, I wanna deploy a Lambda function and an S3 bucket. And I want to grant read access from that Lambda function to that S3 bucket. So what we have here first is my, um, my IAM role. I have to define an IAM role for my Lambda function that I'm going to attach to it. And I have my statement, which is saying that the principal lambda.amazonaws.com uh, can assume this role. And I'm go going to attach the, um, the basic execution role um, managed policy uh, for this particular role. And now I'm going to define my function. So you can see here, um, notice that everything is starting with CFN. And that's, again, how you know you're interacting with L1 constructs. And this looks very similar to if I was authoring uh, CloudFormation. So if you look in my, my IDE here, the information that's being presented to me is all from CloudFormation. So if I want to look up more information on this particular input, I can go to the CloudFormation docs to read more about it. So you can see here, um, I can define my handler. You know, uh, I've defined the IAM role, which is referencing the ARN of uh, the role that I created above. Um, I'm pointing to the, the code to an S3 bucket, uh, and here's the key of you know, the zip file uh, in that bucket. 
Also, now I'm creating a cloud formation, um, an S3 bucket using the, the CFN bucket construct. I don't have any inputs here, but if I wanted to, I could name the bucket. You know, we'll just name it CFN bucket. Now, I mentioned I want to grant access to this Lambda function um, to be able to access this S3 bucket. So once again, I have to author an IAM policy and, you know, in this policy, I'm going to have my actions. So S3, you know, maybe I want to do a get object version and, you know, there's probably more um, actions that I actually need to add here to properly give it access. Um, so here I'm defining that policy, I'm naming it and then I'm attaching it to the, the particular um, role. Okay. So we'll just do that here. Oops, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, this is very similar to authoring CloudFormation. It maps directly to it, with the main exception being that I'm authoring my infrastructure as code using an imperative programming language. So um, I'm using TypeScript to author my CloudFormation policies which is really cool because, you know, down the road, if I want to, you know, add an, uh, an interface here and maybe add some inputs, you know, such as, uh, I don't know, bucket name, you know, and I can make that a requirement. You know, I, I'm, I'm able to, to do that here and then I can reference that bucket name. You know, I could say also like, Maybe this is not bucket name, but maybe this is deployment environment. And, you know, if deployment environment equals prod, maybe I, I, I make some changes or, you know, if, if my config, yeah, if, if it's prod, maybe I want to add encryption to the bucket as a default for production environments. I have that power to express that using a native general programming language. So those are L1 constructs very much managing the boilerplate, connecting resources together, and having to have that familiarity with all of the res resources required to actually deploy my Lambda function, give it the proper access to that S3 bucket, and so on. Now we're going to move on to L2 constructs. So in this example, I'm going to just stick with um, the S3 bucket uh, construct here. I'm not going to pass any, you know, inputs in, but you can see here are the various inputs available to me that I could leverage. Um, you know, if I did want to leverage encryption, you can see rather than having to refer to the S3 S3 documentation for cloud formation and trying to figure out what the proper input is, this actually accepts uh, an enum value. So I can see here that. Um, there's multiple options I can pass in, but it's looking for the bucket encryption um, object. So if we do bucket encryption, and then I have a choice here of all the available uh, encryption options uh, to this S3 bucket. So in this case, I'm just going to say I want S3 managed encryption set up. So you can see I have all of these defaults built in, um, easy to interact with. Uh, inputs with like enums um, and so on. Now I'm also going to define my Lambda function. And there's a really critical piece here to this uh, functionality that makes L2 construct so incredibly powerful. Notice up here in my original code, when I define my Lambda function, I actually had to define what bucket I want to, where my code lives, um, what, you know, the bucket and the, the key, uh, the object key, uh, where the code actually exists in that S3 bucket. Well, in this case, I can actually couple my application code with my uh, infrastructure code. So if you see here, I am using the Lambda the code construct, and I'm choosing the from asset, which is the source directory on my local file system here. So down here, if I were to navigate to source and then vim index.js, you can see this is my CDK code. It's Node.js. And by pointing the Lambda function uh, construct to that code, it is going to automatically 
upload that code. It's going to uh, compile it, up, compress it, upload it to S3, and then point this Lambda function to that code. So already it's taking a part of that DevOps workflow that I'd have to figure out how to build on my own and handling that for me. Now, there's a lot more you can do with this. For example, I, I wouldn't, I don't have to necessarily use the from uh, asset, like a, a code asset. I could also say from asset image. And that could point to a Docker file on my local file system. And again, what will happen is the Lambda function, the, the CDK will actually build that um, container image, store it in the CDK assets, ECR repository, and then point uh, the Lambda function to that Docker image. So um, just going down, you know, as I continue here, I have my Lambda handler, which this is just an input string. But once again, you can see uh, I have another enum input here to choose my runtime. So, you know, I went with the uh, Node.js, but you can see if I choose lambda.runtime, look at all the options that are available to me um, as I'm uh, deploying this function. So I can very quickly know what is available for me to build my Lambda function, what versions of the programming languages are available. For example, I see Java 11, 17, and 8, Java 8 Coretto, and so on. So in this example, we're going to go with uh, Node.js 18, and we're going to stick with that. Now, this is where L2 constructs get insanely powerful. So you saw above, I had to author an IAM role and I had to create a policy to grant access and attach it to that role to grant access from that Lambda function to that S3 bucket. So as you can see, my IAM role was, or my policy was not the best. I didn't grant the full level of access I needed. So it's gonna be a lot of back and forth trying to, to figure that out. Instead, what I'm doing is with, let's go back here, with the helper methods available, I'm simply saying for my, my bucket, and I'm going to type it out so we can see L2 bucket dot, look at all the helper methods available. So if I want to look at the grant methods, I can grant put, grant read, grant read write. There's a whole bunch of access that I can control through these grant methods. And what it's going to do, so let's say, let's say grant read write to my, my function. So also you'll notice here, I didn't create a role. So by default, the Lambda function construct is going to create an IAM role and attach it to my Lambda function. And it'll automatically include the basic, um, the managed execution role for AWS Lambda. In addition, when I, when I um, call this grant read write method, this helper, and I pass in the Lambda function object, what's going to happen is the CDK is going to create a policy, attach it to that role, that grants access, the proper access to read and write to and from that bucket to my Lambda function. So you can already see the value of the L2 functions because, or the L2 constructs because I don't actually have to go and you know, author the IAM policies on my own and figure out how to connect everything together. So you can see this is very human readable. It's easy to interact with and it provides a really streamlined and, and simple experience when connecting resources. Now, I want to preface this with, if you have, you know, look at the, the policies that it creates and double check to make sure that those are acceptable within your organization. And if not, the beauty of the CDK with L2s and, and L1s is you can always just create your own policies, your own roles, and attach them uh, as well. So just another helper um, function that uh, I, I leveraged here, which was the add object created notification method. So if you see here, what I want to do is I want to, every time an object gets created into this bucket, I want to trigger this function. So if you look here, I'm simply passing in the Lambda destination um, uh, construct from the S3 notifications library. And I'm giving it the L2 function. So this function that I created up here. What this will do is this is going to create the event. It's going to sync the event with the proper Lambda function when objects are created. And all I had to do 
was define a single line of code. I know it's spread out, but I use a, a an editor um, that makes it pretty. So, you know, it's spaced it out properly according to, you know, the proper linting for TypeScript. So as you can see, L2 constructs abstract a lot of the, abstract a lot of the, uh, the complex boilerplate logic to connect everything together. So now let's go a step further and let's look at an L3 construct. So as I mentioned earlier, L3 constructs are commonly referred to as patterns. These encompass you know, multiple resources to achieve a very specific desired outcome. So in this case, we have the ECS patterns library. And within that library, there's multiple, by the way, there's multiple options available. So let's call this out and see. So you can see there's an application load balance Fargate service, EC2 service, there's a network load balanced service. In addition, you can do a scheduled task, queue processing. And what that'll do is it is going to create all of the required resources with the least amount of inputs required. And it's going to, you know, in this example, create an application load balancer, create target groups, listeners. It's going to attach my ECS service to the listeners. It's going to um, download the container image or build the container image. So I could also, once again, leverage the from asset and point to a local Docker file on my file system and have it build that as well. And it's going to take all of this and build all of those resources and connect everything together. So what this will generate is a few few hundred lines of CloudFormation code. Now, again, this is a, a very simple example, but I'm pointing to a, a, an image that exists in a public repository. I'm saying, here's the port I want to run on. Everything else, I want the construct to take care of. It'll create a, an ECS cluster. Um, in this case, uh, it'll create a VPC because I didn't bring those in. But of course, you can always build on these. But it's very important to know that L3 constructs are very opinionated. And while there are certain inputs you can bring, you know, like bring your own VPC, for example, bring your own um, ECS cluster, for example, you have a lot of flexibility here with how you want to, to build within the constraints. However, once you want to build outside of the constraints of that pattern it, and dive deeper into the constructs, it can become more challenging. So this is why we see folks that are authoring L3 constructs oftentimes um, have to really be, be cognizant of how they build them and allow for the ability to escape or kind of go under the covers when needed to build out you know, functionality that's going to suit your application and how you want to build. So again, this very simple construct here creates an opinionated um, you know, service pattern based off of um, how this construct was built. So that wraps it up for constructs. And I just want to uh, direct folks to a couple different places if they're interested in, in reading more. First is the AWS documentation. So check out um, the docs where we dive into constructs and explain the various constructs available and how they all how they work, um, as well as uh, I've included this code in a GitHub uh, repository. Very simple, very high level, but just to help understand and illustrate how these constructs work and the differences between them.